हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज़ उबैद खान वेलकम टू द चैनल आई एस टारगेट दिस इज़ चैप्टर फोर एग्रीकल्चर ऑफ क्लास एट्थ जियोग्राफी एन तो विदाउट एनी फर्दर ड्यू लेट्स बिगिन फर्स्ट लेट्स ब्रेक द वर्ड एग्रीकल्चर एग्री एंड कल्चर एग्री मीन सॉइल कल्चर मीन्स कल्टिवेशन मीन कल्टिवेशन ऑफ सॉइल वैन वी कल्टिवेट समथिंग फ्राम सॉइल और वी कैन से वैन वी जनरेट समथिंग फ्राम सॉइल दैट इज़ कॉल्ड एग्रीकल्चर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन फ्राम प्लान टू अ फिनिश प्रोडक्ट इन्वॉल्व थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ इकनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज दीज आर प्राइमरी सेकेंडरी एंड टर्चरी एक्टिविटीज सपोज लेट्स टेक एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ बिस्किट्स फॉर बेटर अंडरस्टैंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू ईट बिस्किट सो यू हैव टू ग्रो अ क्रॉप ऑफ वीट फॉर डैट इट इज़ अ प्राइमरी एक्टिविटी इट इंक्लूड्स ऑल दूज कनेक्टेड विद एक्सट्रैक्शन एंड द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज एग्रीकल्चर फिशिंग एंड गैदरिंग आर ऑल्सो एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ primary activity primary activity is the first activity for example once you have grown crop of wheat then you would take wheat to the factories to become it flour this is a secondary activity secondary activities are concerned with the processing of these resources manufacturing of steel baking of bread and weaving of cloth are examples of secondary activity after making the biscuit you will transport it you, uh, you will or you will trade with the biscuits or you will advertise to sell the biscuits these activities are tertiary activities agriculture is a primary activity it include growing crops fruits vegetables flowers and rearing of livestock in the world 50% of persons are engaged in the agriculture activity if i talk about india then 2/3 of the india's population is still dependent on agriculture but agriculture is not same everywhere it depend on the favorable um topography of soil it depend on the climate of this area it depend on the population of the area if the population is high then the demand of the produce will be high the land on which the crops are grown is known as arable land you can see the map you can see the green area this is all uh, arable land where crops are grown agriculture the science and the art of cultivation on the soil raising crops and rearing livestock it is also called farming sericulture means commercial raising of silk worms it is called sericulture pisciculture breeding of fish is called pisciculture viticulture includes cultivation of grapes horticulture includes growing vegetables flowers fruits for commercial use let's talk about farm system as any other system farm system also have input processing and its output uh, let's see the input process and output of the farm system machinery seeds and chemicals are the inputs of farm system plowing sowing spraying are the process and the output crops are the output of the farm system let's read how many types of farming are there farming can be classified into two main types these are subsistence farming and commercial farming subsistence farming this type of farming is practiced to meet the needs of the farmer's family let me tell you this is a small type of farming in the subsistence farming the family members of the farmer can do work as a labor to produce on a small output subsistence farming can be further classified as intensive subsistence and primitive subsistence let's read about intensive subsistence agriculture let's read about intensive subsistence farming In this type of farming the farmer cultivates a small plot of land using simple tools but it requires more labor to cultivate a land and it requires a sunshine climate in this only one crop grow annually on a same plot rice is the main crop other crops include wheat maize pulses and oil seeds also intensive subsistence agriculture is prevalent in the highly thickly in the thickly populated areas of the monsoon region also now let's read about primitive subsistence agriculture or primitive subsistence farming it includes shifting cultivation and nomadic herding shifting cultivation this type of farming is practiced in amazon basin tropical tropical africa parts of southeast asia and northeast india means this type of farming is practiced in the thickly forested areas these are the areas of heavy rainfall and quick regeneration of vegetation in this farming a plot of land is cleared by felling the trees and burning them the ashes are then mixed with the soil and crops like maize yam potatoes and cassava are grown let's read about shifting cultivation shifting cultivation is practiced in the thickly forested areas 
like Amazon Basin, Tropical Africa, parts of Southeast Asia and Northeast India. These areas have very thick forests. That is why this type of um, cultivation is practiced there. These are the areas where heavy rainfall and a quick regeneration of vegetation is present. In this type of farming, a plot of land is cleared by felling the trees and burning them. The ashes after the burning them of the area are then mixed with the soil and crops like maize, yam, potatoes and cassava. After the soil loses its fertility, the land is abandoned and the cultivator moves to a new plot. This type of cultivation also known as slash and burn agriculture. Now let's read about nomadic herding. Nomadic herding is practiced in the semi-arid and arid regions of Sahara, Central Asia and some parts of India like Rajasthan, Jammu and Kashmir. In this type of farming, herdsman. Now what is the mean of herdsman? In Hindi, herdsman means charvahe. By which the man with their animals move from one place to the, uh, to the another in search of food in search of food water this type of movement arises in the response to a climatic constraints and trains mean if the climatic condition does not suit to the herdsman then it then they move to the one place to the another sheep camel yak and goats are most commonly reared animals why because these animals provide the herdsman milk meat wood hides and other products to the herders and their families now let's read about commercial farming. By the word commercial, you can estimate the thing directly related to the business. In the commercial farming, crops are grown and the animals are reared for sale in a market. The area cultivated and the amount of capital used in the large. In this type of farming, a large amount of capital and a large amount of area is used. Most of the work is done by the machine. We can classify commercial farming as commercial grain farming, mixed farming, and plantation agriculture. First, read about commercial grain farming. In the commercial grain farming, crops are grown for commercial purpose. As we know, as you can estimate by its name, commercial. Mean, it is something that is related to the trade. Wheat and maize are the common commercially grown grains. Temperate grassland of North America, Europe, and Asia are the areas where Commercial grain farming is practiced. These areas are sparsely populated. Now, what is sparsely populated? It is, it is where um, population is less or the, uh, where there is no population. But it has large farms spreading over hundreds of hectares. In this, winters restrict the growing season. That's why they grow only a single crop in annually. Now, let's read about the mixed farming. By the word mixed farming, you can uh, you can imagine there is something that is mixed. In a mixed farming, the land is used for growing food and fodder crops and rearing livestock. It is practiced in Europe, Eastern USA, Argentina, Southeast Australia, New Zealand and South Africa. Now let's read about plantation. Plantation are a type of commercial farming where single crop of tea Coffee, sugarcane, cashew, rubber, banana, or cotton are grown. In this, there are large amount of labor is required. With the labor, there is a large amount of capital also required. The produce may be processed on the farm itself or in the nearby factories. So this transportation should be very good. Major plantations are found in the tropical regions of the world. Rubber in Malaysia, coffee in Brazil, tea in uh, India, tea in India, Sri Lanka are some examples of plantation. Now let's read about major crops. Major food crops are wheat, rice, maize and millets. Jutes and cotton are fiber crops. Important beverage crops are tea and coffee. Let's read about rice. Rice is the major food crop of the world. It is a stable diet of the tropical and subtropical regions. Rice needs high temperature, high humidity and high rainfall. It grows best in alluvial clay soil which can retain water. China leads in the production of rice followed by Indian, Japan, Sri Lanka and Egypt. Now let's read about wheat. It does not require high temperature. It requires moderate temperature 
and moderate rainfall during growing season, but it required bright sunshine at the time of harvest. Some of the leading producers of wheat in USA, Canada, Argentina, Russia, Ukraine, Australia and India. In India, it is grown in winter. Now let's read about millets. Millet is also called bajra. They are also known as coarse grain and can be grown on a less fertile and a sandy soils. It is a hardy crop that needs low rainfall. It does not need high rainfall. Jowar, bajra and ragi are grown in India. Other countries are Nigeria, China and Niger. Now let's read about maize. Maize requires moderate temperature, rainfall and lots of sunshine. It needs well-drained fertile soil. Maize Maize is grown in North America, Brazil, China, Russia, Canada, India and Mexico. Now let's read about cotton. Cotton requires high temperature, light rainfall, but it requires 210 frost free days. Means it requires 210 ice free days. Means there should be no ice, there should be no cool place. Otherwise it will not grow properly. It requires bright sunshine for its growth. It, uh, it grows best on a black and alluvial soils. China, USA, India, Pakistan, Brazil and Egypt are the leading producers of cotton. It is one of the main raw materials for the cotton textile industry. Now let's read about jute. Jute is also known as golden fiber. You can be asked in various exams like what, what is called as golden fiber. It grows well on alluvial soil and it requires high temperature, heavy rainfall and humid climate. This crop is grown in the tropical areas. India and Bangladesh are the leading producers of jute. Now let's read about coffee. Coffee requires warm and wet climate and well-drained loamy soil. His slopes are more suitable for growth of this crop. Brazil is the leading producer followed by the Colombia and India. Now let's read about tea. Tea is a beverage crop grown on plantation. In India, Assam is famous for the tea plantation. This requires cool climate and well distributed high rainfall throughout the year for the growth of its tender leaves. In the tea plantation, a large amount of labor is required to pick the leaves. As the population is continuously growing, so we should take some steps in the favor of the agriculture development. We should increase the crop area or we should increase the number of crops. We should increase the irrigation facilities for farmers. We should improve the use of fertilizers and high yielding variety of seeds. Mechanization of agriculture is also another aspect of agriculture development. The ultimate aim of agriculture development is to increase food security. Agriculture has developed in different places in different parts of the world. Developing countries with large population usually practice intensive agriculture where crops are grown on a small holdings mostly for subsistence. So the chapter is done. I hope you like the video. If you really like the video then please hit the like button and please subscribe the channel to get updated. Thank you so much for watching.